it's time for you all to wake up and shift your paradigm. This world is the kingdom of darkness and we are living in its last days. It won't be long before the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. The heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat and the earth and everything therein shall be burnt up. The Luciferian elite have been setting up the new world order and now they've established the globalist beast system for the rise of that wicked one and revealing of the man of sin who comes after the workings of Satan. Don't take my word for it. Read the Bible and you'll know that perilous times shall come in the last days. And we are in the last days. Good day, brothers and sisters. I am continuing with the videos we are doing on Revelation. And today we are going to look at Revelation chapter 3 from verse 1 to verse 6. Now, this is the message to Sardis, right? So, it is written here, and to the angel of the Lord in and to the angel of the church in Sardis, write, These are the words of him who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. All right. Let's just pause there for a moment. Um, in one of the earlier videos in this Revelation series, I made a mistake. I said that the Holy Spirit, remember, uh, the Holy Spirit in Revelation is described as seven spirits before God's throne. That is a sevenfold ministry that the Holy Spirit has. And I made a mistake earlier because I said that the sevenfold ministry of the Holy Spirit is uh, basically, um, we don't know what all seven aspects are, but Luckily, my beautiful wife, uh, through the powerful working of the Holy Spirit, showed it to me. If we go to Isaiah 11, the sevenfold ministry is described there. Remember Isaiah 11? If you look at the first three verses, this is a, the whole of Isaiah 11 is a, one of Isaiah's prophecies about Jesus Christ. Um, coming to earth, doing his earthly ministry. And there we see the sevenfold working of the Holy Spirit described. It says, Isaiah 11, A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The stump of Jesse, Jesse was uh, David's father. Now remember, Jesus came from the line of David, the bloodline of David. And a branch shall grow out of his roots. Now, verse 2. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him. Spirit of the Lord. The spirit of wisdom. Spirit of understanding. Spirit of counsel. Spirit of might. Spirit of knowledge. And the spirit of the fear of the Lord. There you have it. That's the sevenfold ministry of the Holy Spirit. And then it says in verse 3, His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. So this basically is, um, this forms a parallel with the book of Revelation because um, earlier in Revelation we see that this spirit described as the seven spirits before God's throne. So it's still one Holy Spirit, but he has a sevenfold ministry. And remember now when Isaiah made that prophecy about Jesus, we saw that we know that the Holy Spirit always points to Jesus and Jesus always points to God the Father. Okay. So the Spirit of the Lord was on Jesus. Okay. We needed his earthly ministry. And that, why, that is why we said that while he was on earth, he was 100% human, but at the same time, 100% God. All right. He also got tired, he also got um, hungry, thirsty, and so on, but he never sinned. He didn't have any sin, okay? So, 
the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. Remember earlier we uh, read that the seven stars of God um, or the, the seven stars that um, Jesus has in his hand are the seven churches in Asia Minor, which is modern day Turkey. Now he writes the following to the church of Sardis. He says, I know your works. You have a name of being alive, but you are dead. Wake up and strengthen what remains and is on the point of death. For I have not found your works perfect in the sight of my God. Remember then what you received and heard, obey it and repent. If you do not wake up, I will come like a thief and you will not know at what, what hour I will come to you. Yet you have still you have still a few persons in Sardis who have not soiled their clothes. They will walk with me dressed in white, for they are worthy. If you conquer, you will be clothed like them in white robes, and I will not erase your name from the book of life. I will confess your name before my father and before his angels. Let anyone who has an ear listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. All right, so... He says, I know your works. You have a name of being alive, but you are dead. Now, you know, what we see with the church in Sardis is exactly what you see with a lot of churches in our day and time. They have a name among people of being alive, but they are dead. And it's because these churches care more about what people think. They don't care what God thinks. They don't care what Jesus thinks. David Paulson, the author of um, Unlocking the Bible, said something very important. And what he said was, he said many important things, but one of the things that he said was, no matter what church you are in, always ask yourself, is your pastor, the minister, or whoever, is he really God-fearing? And... Will Jesus feel welcome in that church or not? That's the main question. No matter what other people think about the church you go to. Doesn't matter what people think of that church. It matters what God thinks, what Jesus thinks of that church. Is the Holy Spirit welcome there? Will Jesus feel welcome there? Um, is it really a church that glorifies God the Father, the creator of heaven and earth? Or is it the church that seeks to glorify man? Wake up and strengthen what remains and is on the point of death, for I have not found your works perfect in the sight of my God. You see, this indicates that what happened in Sardis was a work-based salvation. Now, if you go to Matthew chapter 6, Matthew chapter 6, The first three verses of Matthew chapter 6, Jesus says, Beware of practicing your righteousness before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. You see, this is the thing. Oftentimes, people love to sound a, a proverbial trumpet in front of themselves, and they post everything they do for others on social media, and they will tell you, I gave money to this beggar, and they will even take a selfie of it, and they will record a video of it. And I will tell you, I was at the children's home today and I gave them food and blankets and they will take a video of it, and take photos of it. If you do that, then you are busy with not edifying God. You are busy with edifying yourself because you want to look good in front of others. Okay. Jesus clearly said, let not your right hand know what your left hand is doing. Okay. Your one hand should not know what your other hand is doing. That's how quiet you should be about the good works that you do. Are we saved by good works? Definitely not. 
but we are saved by faith, but faith without works is dead. Okay? So, if you have faith in God and you have a relationship with Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you truly lived a Holy Spirit filled life, you are truly born again, then you will find that your faith, from your faith, flows forth good works. The Apostle Paul clearly writes in the in his letter to the Ephesians that the foundation is Christ and that we should build on that foundation. Now, if you do good works in order to be seen by others, then your works are dead, then you're building on the wrong foundation. You're building on a foundation of me, myself, and I. But if you have true faith in Christ and you have a relationship with Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you are building on the foundation which is Jesus Christ. And the proverbial stones that you use to build on that foundation, that is good works that flows forth from your faith. And no one whose good works flows forth from their faith will go and brag to others and advertise themselves in social media and say, I did this today. And today I donated $2,000 or 2,000 South African rand or 500 British pounds or whatever money. I donated it to a cancer foundation and I helped at the animal shelter and here's the photos and here's the video. You know, it's, that's glorifying the flesh. That's glorifying yourself. It's not glorifying God. Now, this is the exact thing that happened in the church in Sardis. And Jesus doesn't mince his words. You know, uh, we see that in the Gospels. When Jesus needed to be soft-spoken, he was very soft-spoken. But when he needed to be harsh, he could be very harsh, very straightforward. He doesn't mince his words. And the same happens here. He says to them, remember then what you received and heard, obey it and repent. Repentance, as we've said before, is a swear word in many churches today. And that is a tragic fact. Repentance is crucial. If you do, if you examine yourself and the Holy Spirit examines your heart and God points out to you that you have a problem and that your faith is focused on a works-based faith in which you are glorifying yourself, not glorifying God, then first of all, the first thing you do is you repent. You say, Lord, please forgive me. I admit, I repent, I admit that I have glorified myself by doing good works. Please forgive me for that and help me to live a God-fearing life. Help me build up my faith by the powerful working of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. And help me to focus on my faith in you, my relationship in you, and let my good works flow forth from that and let it be good works that glorify you, not myself. Okay? If you do not wake up, once again, Jesus being very straightforward, if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief and you will not know at what hour I come to you. Yet you have still a few persons in Sardis who have not soiled their clothes. They will walk with me dressed in white, for they are worthy. You see, when we have <clears throat> when we have works that are dead, works that are not based on faith, works that we use to glorify ourselves, you work so hard and you do so many good things to glorify yourself, your clothes get soiled with mud and all kinds of dirty things. And at the end of the day, it helps nothing. It doesn't, it doesn't give you salvation because salvation is only found in Christ Jesus. And that's why Jesus is using this metaphor. He says, those in Sardis who have not soiled their clothes, they will walk with me dressed in white. Remember, white is a color that's associated with being pure. So he says to them, 
those in Sardis, I know who they are, those in Sardis who are still true to my word and who are not part of the dead works, works-based salvation squad. Their clothes are clean. I will dress them in white. They will walk with me in white. Their hearts are pure. You see. And to those who are not pure, he says, if you conquer, in other words, if you repent and you overcome this sin that you commit, you will be clothed like them in white robes and I will not erase your name from the book of life. You know, <clears throat> Having one's name erased from the book of life is one of the scariest things. Along with that, one of the scariest things is hearing the words, depart from me, I never knew you. <laughs> depart from me, you worker of iniquity, I never knew you. Those are the words that Jesus Christ will say to those on the day of judgment who um, had a dark agenda, who claimed that they followed him, but their hearts were somewhere else. People who rejected him, people who mocked him, people who never repented and never came to faith in Christ. He will say to them, depart from me, I never knew you. Those are, that, that's scary. And along with that, if you hear what Jesus is saying here, and you realize that God can erase someone's name from the book of life, if someone continues in their sin and their heart becomes hardened and it becomes a heart of stone and eventually they die in that sin and they never repent it, you know, that's, that's a horrible thing. He says, if you repent and if you overcome the wrong things you are doing, I will not erase your name from the book of life. I will confess your name before my father and before his angels. Remember also Jesus said that those who confess me, I will confess them in front of my father and his angels. But those who deny me, I will deny them. Let anyone who has an ear listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. You see, the thing is, when, when someone's um, faith is based on works and they only seek to glorify themselves, then that person becomes boastful. And God absolutely rejects boastfulness, arrogance, pride. He hates those things. If you go to Proverbs chapter 6, you'll see there are seven things that God hates, and, and eyes filled with pride, you know, people being arrogant, people being boastful. Those are, that's one of the things that God hates. So we should always search our own hearts and ask the Holy Spirit to search our hearts and reveal to us whenever we stray from the path and we place our focus on faith based on works it should be works based on faith not faith based on works because if you have faith in christ then you have the foundation which is christ and then your good works flow forth you build forth on that and the fire in that building the fire that lightens up the building inside is the holy spirit i will just end for us with a prayer our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you in the glorious name above all names, the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Lord, we thank you for the Holy Spirit. Lord, please help us that we will never stray from the path. Help us that we will never focus on glorifying our own flesh by good works. But help us to build on the foundation which is Christ Jesus, the only true foundation. Help us to build on the rock not on the sand, Lord. Lord, thank you for your word. And we glorify and we praise your name. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I pray. Amen.